With AMD recently launching the new Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, I've had a lot of people asking if we're going to see a handheld powered by this chip with a crazy 40 CUI GPU. The easy answer to this is I'm sure some company is going to create a handheld with this chip. I mean, after all, it does offer the best iGPU performance that we've ever seen. And what I've got here is the ASUS ROG Flow Z13. This is going to give us a good idea if we could run this chip at lower TDPs to outperform something like the Ryzen Z1 Extreme. So that's exactly what we're going to be putting it up against. And when it comes to these handheld devices powered by the Z1 Extreme, I usually have two different presets, an 18 watt preset, which is kind of my performance, and then an all out 25 watt preset. And that's going to be on battery. In this video, I've got a lot to talk about, but before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. I've been using this site for quite some time now. They offer Steam Keys, Uplay, Ubisoft, but the main thing I pick up over here are Windows 11 Pro Keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off. So at checkout, we'll just enter the code ETA. That's going to bring the price down to $22.88. They're going to email you that key and then you can activate Windows. Speaking of that, let's head over to a new PC that I recently built. As you can see, we're running Windows 11. And from settings, we're going to go to activation settings. It's going to tell us that we're not active. We don't have a key installed. So we're just going to paste it right in here. Choose next. It's going to activate Windows for us and we're ready to go. If you're in need of cheap Windows keys, I'll leave a link in the description. And remember, you can use code ETA for 25% off. And of course, when you're in dock mode plugged into the wall, you can go much higher than this. But when it comes to that new AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, it is a much higher wattage chip and the die itself is a lot larger than something like the Z1 Extreme. But when it comes down to it, Z1 Extreme based on Zen 4, 8 cores, 16 threads. But over on the Max Plus, it's based on Zen 5 and we've got 16 cores and 32 threads. The Z1 Extreme's iGPU is based on RDNA 3 and we've got 12 compute units, but the big change here is with the Max Plus, it's based on RDNA 3.5 and there's 40 compute units. I mean, this is on par with a laptop RTX 4070. The last thing here is AMD's configurable TDP. On the Z1 Extreme, it's 9 watts up to 30 and for the Max Plus, they recommend 45 up to 120. We've seen this running at around 28 to 120 watts in different devices. And running something like this at 45 to 120 watts in a battery powered device just isn't going to last long. So I wanted to take the wattage down and see what it would do at those lower TDPs. But before we jump over to some 18 and 25 watt benchmarks against the Z1 Extreme, at a 70 watt TDP with Time Spy, we get a score of around 10,286. And we can actually take this up a bit. Highest score I've seen is around 11,500 at an 85 watt TDP, but taking those wattages down to an 18 watt TDP, on the Z1 Extreme with Time Spy, we got a 2,773. On the Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, 3,023. So not too far off here. Taking it up to a 25 watt TDP on that Z1 Extreme, we're at 3,134, and on the Max Plus, 4,113. But like I showed you, at those much higher wattages, I mean, we're over 10,000 with it. Next thing I ran here was Geekbench 6, just at a 25 watt TDP. And you can see that that Max Plus has beaten out the Z1 Extreme in single and multi here. But it's not a tremendous jump at these lower TDPs. But after all, these are synthetics. And now I want to get into some real world gaming with the Max Plus 395 at 18 watts, 25. And I even tested a game at a 15 watt TDP. Here's GTA 5, the enhanced edition, 1080. Going down the list here, you can see we're at all high settings. I am using FSR, it's set to quality. We're at an 18 watt TDP. Afterburner up in the top left hand corner. And you'll notice that our clocks don't go very high on that GPU or CPU because we're at that really low wattage. When you consider AMD recommends 45 to 120 watts with this thing but it's actually doing a pretty good job and we could definitely drop the resolution down. That's gonna help tremendously. Even going down to 900p with this game is really gonna take you over that 60 mark. And another thing I tried with the Max Plus was disabling some cores. Now it really doesn't seem to help out. I guess it doesn't know what to do with that extra power. I went down to eight cores, 16 threads. 
and it really didn't help out. Our clocks were basically at the same kind of clocks they are right now at an 18 watt TDP with 16 cores and 32 threads. But taking this up to a 25 watt TDP does unlock a little bit out of it. As you can see, we're up to around 90 FPS. Before we had an average of around 58 at 18 watts, 1080p high. And given that a lot of these newer handhelds hit the market have those much larger 80 watt hour batteries, you could still get some pretty decent battery life out of it at a 25 watt TDP. But it would be nice, you know, to be able to run this at an 18 watt, same kind of frame rate that we're getting here. The next game we have here is Doom Eternal. We're at 1080 high settings, 25 watt TDP, and we're seeing an average of around 78 FPS. I mean, this is looking great. I knew we'd see some good performance out of this game. Very well optimized. It has been on the market for a little while and it uses that Vulcan back end. And with this, we are at a 100% resolution scale. So it's a true 1080p. Witcher 3 was another one I wanted to test here, and I am using the Steam Deck preset, 18 watt TDP, but instead of running this at like 800p, we're at 1080, and it definitely looks good like this. I had a lot of fun playing this, uh, even just at an 18 watt TDP, but there's more that we can get out of this. Of course, taking that wattage up is going to help out tremendously with something like this. So we'll kick it up to a 25 watt TDP, and now we're seeing an average of around 84 FPS. If I went up to high settings with this, we'd still be over 60 at 1080, 25 watts with this Max Plus 395. I wanted to throw an older one in here, so I went with Leopard Dead 2, we're at 1080p, max settings, 15 watt TDP, well over 100 FPS, and uh, for sure, I know that this chip, even at a 55 watt TDP, can run this at 4K all day, 140 FPS. Now getting up to these newer AAA games is where we're going to see some issues at those lower TDPs. Spider-Man 2, 1080p, medium settings, 18 watt TDP. And at first starting this out, I was on a high building. It was over 60 and I got really excited about it. But then as soon as I dropped down, you can see we're in the mid 40s with it. And this 8060 Si GPU can clock all the way up to 2900 megahertz, but it's just not going to do it at 18 watts. You'll see we're only at around 600 megahertz. I think it jumps up to close to 700 every once in a while. But yeah, we're far off from what this thing can really be running at. So let's take it up to 25 watts. And now you can see we're over 60 FPS. In fact, we had an average of 67 FPS by the time I was done playing this at a 25 watt TDP, 1080 medium. And the final game I wanted to test here was Cyberpunk 2077, and this didn't fare very well at an 18 watt TDP. I actually had to drop this down to 900p using that Steam Deck preset. You can see we're right there in the mid high 40s with it. So we definitely need to either take the wattage up or the settings down. We're just going to take it to 25 watts. And it obviously helped out quite a bit. We're now seeing an average of around 63 FPS, 900p Steam Deck preset, 25 watt TDP. But there are some cases where it drops under 60, especially when there's explosions on screen. And even at 25 watts, you can see that our iGPU clock on that 8060S is still under 900 megahertz. I don't want anybody to get the wrong impression about this chip. It's an absolute beast. It's the most powerful iGPU on the market, but you need to put some more wattage to it. Here's Cyberpunk 1080 Ultra Settings 70 Watt TDP. We're seeing an average of around 90 FPS. And uh, we can take this up to around 95 watts in the Z13. Even at 1440 high settings, this game runs over 60. So obviously, lower TDPs were not on the table when AMD was designing this chip. I mean, it's meant to run it at least 45 watts. Again, you could go to around 28 and see some pretty decent performance with it. 
Now you can see our 8060S is about 2000, 2100 megahertz, and we've still got more that we can get out of this. Remember, it can clock up to 2900 megahertz. So yeah, when it comes down to it, this is probably the big reason we haven't seen any handheld gaming PCs powered by the Max Plus 395. Really comes down to this just being a pretty power hungry chip when you consider mobile chips on the market like the Z1 Extreme. Personally, I'm really excited about the Z2 Extreme. Basically same thing as the HX370. And with that at lower wattages, you can get some amazing performance out of it. So I do think that we may see at least one or two handhelds powered by this, but I don't think it's going to be widespread. And I really don't see any of these bigger companies creating a handheld specifically around the 395. Of course, I will keep my eye out for a handheld powered by this chip, but that's going to wrap it up for this one. If there's anything else you want to see running on the Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.